Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 ed edition of the Design Council's Design for Planet Festival. My name is Patrick I, and I'll be your host for the next two days of exciting talks about the role of design in the climate emergency. Um, I'm really excited about this festival. Uh, I wrote a book on biomimicry, and I think that whether it's intelligent design or nature's design, we really need to pay, pay, atten pay attention to the possibilities that are out there when it comes to helping us solve this climate crisis. Now, we were in Dundee last year for our first edition, but this year we're going digital and dialing in our partners at Northumbria University and Newcastle City Council. You'll meet some of them as they give talks and chair some of our panels, but make sure you see what's going on. <laughs> I'll, I'll try that again. <laughs> make sure you see what their graphic design students are up to in the sprints happening later on in room two. This year, our theme is action. So I'm very excited about the opportunities to learn how to address the climate emergency, whether you work in design, work with designers, or are just interested in, des in design in general. A little technical note that you can switch on live captioning at the bottom of your screen, and you can ask questions with the Q&A button. Our wonderful team will be helping to manage those questions, so keep it short and clear so we can ask as many questions as possible of our fantastic speakers. We've got an exciting lineup of over 60 speakers coming from different areas of design and business. They're going to talk about everything from the way we get around our community, the way we get around our communities, manage food and waste, and work with each other to address the climate emergency. Most of what you see will be in this main room, uh, will be keynotes, con uh, conversations, and panel discussions. Head over to room one, however, where Priya Prakash, one of my co-hosts, will lead you through our how-to sessions, which are only 30 minutes long, and really focus on giving you some tools and insights you can apply today. I'm gonna to give my brow a little wipe. We're in this studio, it's rather warm over here, as you could probably <laughs> guess. Um, over in room two, three design sprints will be going on, hosted by the Design Council. They're going to work, they're going to work with you to come up with some great ideas for the future, of our homes, our town centers, and our regions using some of the latest climate data. These co-design sessions will be illustrated by three Northumbria students who are joining us remotely, so it's really worth adding it to your schedule and joining them. Now it's COP27 this week in Sharm El Sheikh, so we'll also be hosting a panel discussion by the new London architecture on what the conference means to architects. You can dial into, you can dial into that at 11 o'clock in room two for that one. Remember to use the hashtag design for planet on social media and go and meet other attendees and the Design Council in the two networking rooms on our festival platform. Okay, I'd now like to welcome the CEO of the Design Council, Minnie Moll, to tell us more about this year's festival. Thanks, Patrick. The Design Council is delighted to be back with Design for Planet number two. A big hello to everyone who joined us last year and a really warm hello to the people who've joined us this year. We have got over 6,000 people registered for this event online, which we think is pretty amazing. And they're from countries around the world. So a global community coming together, which is really exciting. Some thank yous. The first one, a thank you in advance to a brilliant lineup of speakers. Second, a thank you to our partners, Northumbria University and Newcastle Gateshead Initiative. And I'm just saying, in case everyone can hear in the background, I'm hearing Patrick. Don't know if everyone else can. <laughs> I'll carry on. So once I'm thanking our speakers, our partners, Northumbria University and Newcastle Gateshead Initiative. Thank you to our media partner, The Guardian, and thank you to our sponsor, Innovate UK. The UK Design Council is the National Strategic Advisor on Design. Our Design for Planet mission, quite simply, is about putting the planet and nature's needs at the heart of design. It's about galvanizing designers and commissioners of design. Designers from fashion to architecture, graphic to industrial, service um, to digital, across the design sectors, we really need to accelerate the rate at which design is a really positive and regenerative help to addressing the climate crisis. There's a stat we use quite often, 
which is that 80% of the environmental impact of any new product is determined at the design stage. So the critical decisions that we make around circularity, modularity, materiality, life cycle analysis, so important, and increasingly, the questions that we ask about the very purpose of what we're creating and why. Are we thinking differently enough to drive the system changes that we need? Or are we sometimes tinkering around the edges? As Patrick said, the theme of this year is action. Many climate scientists agree that we know much of what we need to know to address this crisis. What we need is the will and the leadership and action. We have intentionally brought together designers, business, climate change experts to create really, really rich content for you. And we think there will be a lot of intelligent collision. Design is after all creative problem solving and the more diversity, the better the thinking. And we are truly going to be more powerful together. We've got two brilliant MCs in Patrick and Priya who are going to keep us on track over the two days. And it is just two days, two days to get inspired and energized. This crisis is so seismic. I think many of us feel at times overwhelmed, frightened, angry. So it's so important for us to feel a sense of solidarity and shared purpose with others to be able to boost our energy, to believe, yes, we can do this. It's two days of ideas and how to put them into action. And it's two days to focus on what we can do, what's in our scope of influence, if you will, the difference that we can make with the power of design. So whatever else is on your to-do list, my throw down to you is give yourself the gift of time. Stay with us for the two days, or if you're popping in and out, pop in a lot to really take the time to think, to give yourself some space to think about this more important than anything else challenge that we face. As COP27 unfolds this week with some stark realities, it is our intention with this event to create a sense of both urgency and hope. We really must stay hopeful because hope is what will drive us on. And so on that point, I am going to end with a quote that I love, which is from Joel A. Barker, futurist and author, and it's this. Vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision is just passing time. Vision with action can change the world. So with that in mind, really enjoy the two days. Thanks so much for being with us. And back to you, Patrick. Nice, vision with action will change the world. That's amazing. Thank you very much, Minnie. Uh, now, a warm welcome from the festival partner, Northumbria University. Before we went into academia, Stephen Kuyfen was at Philips Electronics in the Netherlands, where he was the Senior Director of Design, Research and Innovation and a member of the Philips Design Global Management Team. He's now Pro Vice Chancellor for Business and Enterprise at Northumbria University, which is, the top, which is in the top 25 for research power in the UK. It's also rated by People and Planet as a top Northeast University for sustainability in 2021. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you, Patrick. I had prepared a little introduction for myself, just in case you didn't say all that, but I'm so delighted to be here today and particularly to be wearing the correct shirt, as I've now noticed we are 
we are completely aligned there. So on behalf of Northumbria University, welcome to everybody in person who is here. And I am really so sad that we cannot all be here, or most of us, or many of us be here in the city at, the, at this time. But also to the 6,000 and more who have joined us for this important two-day event on online. It is a, a huge, a huge honour for us to be able to uh, and delight for us to be to partner this. Our design school, as I will say in a few minutes, is absolutely committed uh, to this agenda and is helping to even lead the definition of it. As Patrick has said, I have had a lifetime uh, in design and a lifetime's commitment to enabling design to speak to and act when identifying and delivering solutions to global challenges facing it all, arising from the question that I've always asked, how then shall we live? And then particularly, how well, how then shall we live sustainably? I've always thought that the data and the evidence is clear in presenting the facts to support the argument that we need to act and think differently if we are to play our strategic role in finding solutions in these spaces. But much more importantly, we lead in this way, not only because the data, the evidence and the clear facts say so, but because we collectively believe it is important to do so and part of our essential calling. Facts alone are not enough. It is our values, our beliefs, which drive action as well as our dreams, but not merely the data. Data is abstract. It is our values and our dreams which drive what we need to do. And it is this collective unity to act which drives this university, and in particular, this design school, which I was also design dean for, to take on tomorrow, as we say here in Northumbria. It is to help enable us to fulfill this ambition as a university and play our part in this debate that we welcome you here today to be part of our collective conversation and it goes without saying as i've said we're absolutely delighted and honored above all other design schools in this country to be partnering with the design council for the 2022 design for planet festival this will enable us to be even stronger and make stronger connections and collaborations to be built between our research our innovation our educational ambitions and those of the wider industrial and civic context particularly in the northeast as Patrick has said, we are rated uh, the top sustainable university in the Northeast or one of the top. Uh, and it is absolutely essential that we part, we work in partnership with our uh, stakeholders in this region to drive this agenda. We're absolutely all committed to it. Our colleagues and students alike will be playing a pivotal role in ensuring the success of this festival. Their creativity, their innovative and future focused critical thinking is key to helping us shape a more positive future for us all, both here in the region and in the country and the world, of course. Could I just add a little bit more to the things that Patrick said about the university? Yes, we are in the top 25. Newcastle as a city has two universities and ranked in the top 25 for knowledge creation, research and innovation now. But our art and design at Northumbria, which sadly we don't have across the road, but our art and design here is ranked fourth in the UK for research power now. Uh, so we are not just an educational uh, establishment, we are an academic institute driving the discipline in every way and ranked fourth in the UK. So our, our entire research environment, that's our culture, the way we work, is rated excellent or uh, world leading and internationally excellent. And 94%, these don't mean so much maybe to many of you, but 94% of our active impact has been recognised as uh, outstanding or internationally excellent, which means we're absolutely at the forefront of the agenda. Uh, we are, the thing that's extraordinary about design in this university is that we speak into all our research agenda spaces, health and well-being, energy and clean growth, digital tech, extreme environments, and of course our contribution to the cultural and creative industries agenda in the Northeast is, is absolutely at the core of our work. So we play a connective role in bringing action across all our sector research and disciplinary research with our key industrial and government partners here. Uh, what is particularly uh, important for us, though, especially for our age, is the, the development of future practice. How has design practice changed as we move into a, a realm and epistemy of design 4.0, as I call it? 
We have been driving the development of the design discipline here for the last 50 to 60 years, especially one which has grown now to include craft and making, consultative guidance, as we all know, through to steering business strategy, and now onwards towards delivering direct action in enabling personal and social, cultural, civic even, transformation in the context of a more circular economy where, as we've all recently discussed, the obsession with finite, infinite growth is more than capital, more than material in nature, and does not rely on the finite resources of this world. So I particularly look forward to the panel sessions on next practice um, over the next two days. Uh, without going into great detail, it's clear, as we probably know, this design students at this university set the world alight through the Royal Society of Arts, many awards, Fashion Graduate Week, tens of awards this year. Two of our RIBA uh, architecture students have won North and Eastern RIBA Students of the Year awards, and our fine arts students are also voted uh, of this year's Student Artist of the Year. So we tell our students, tell our story through design and architecture, both through our student life and our academic research. Over these next two days, so that you know what, how we're contributing, the academic and student community in the school and across the wider university will be leading a carefully created fringe festival. We will see uh, a schedule of activities running on campus and in parallel with the online festival. We have workshops in Amsterdam, in Berlin, and in Newcastle, and in London. So, in particular, our students and staff will feed into a series of design sprints, as Patrick mentioned. The graphic designers will be illustrating them. We are um, aimed at finding solutions to our climate-focused problems. We are in, we're including students from fashion, industrial design, communication design, architecture, and so on. And the science and engineering and health and well-being students are working together through those programs. Uh, we did some work yesterday through our Design Declares campaign, and in the next two days, we are looking at, uh, at programs, as I've said, including the NU CAN group of architecture students and the built environment, and we're looking at uh, how we can take on a design and uh, sustainable approach to their architectural work, as well as our own um, design work. In Germany, we're looking at Unbutton, UN Button, University of Northumbria Button uh, is working and we will be live streaming with the London studios as well. Our podcast will be uh, telling our story through our podcast series called Designamite, uh, which you can look at uh, all of that is going on at the same time. I think you'll find uh, all of this is outlined in the programme. And on Thursday, for those of you who are in the city, we are running some uh, design tours around the, the, the cultural agencies and design agencies and uh, uh, research areas in this uh, sustainability space uh, throughout the city. So my last thank you also to the huge Northumbria team, because we had designed and set this up to be a physical event on, online as well as the digital event. Uh, Sadly, a lot of that has had to change, but there has been a huge integrated team, uh, many, many people working together here in Northumbria, led very ably by Heather Robson, the head of design here. So a very big thank you to you. Uh, it has been an extraordinary effort for the university to uh, focus on this event across the whole university for this week. So thank you to you all from the university and from the whole festival. So from me, thank you again for joining us and a very warm welcome from Northumbria University, each and every one of you. And thank you for choosing us. It's been an utter delight. Thank you. <laughs>